Good evening, everyone. When you came in here tonight, you made your own ticket, which probably looks something like this. All right, here we go. So what you did tonight when you came in was my student told you to place a drop of liquid on one plate and then use a second plate in order to squeeze this drop of liquid apart. And so what you saw is something not very interesting. The fluid was just spreading out uniformly in the shape of such a circular disk. However, then was the second part of this experiment where you actually took these two plates apart again. And this is where you saw spontaneously the growth and the formation of a pattern. So what is actually going on here? So what's going on here is that you have two fluids. You have your blue dye or your dye drop, which is one of the fluids, and you have the air, which is our second fluid. Now these two fluids, they have very different viscosities, where the viscosity tells us something about how easily a fluid flows. So your dye has a rather high viscosity, so high resistance to flow, whereas the air flows very easily and therefore has a low viscosity. So now in this first part of the experiment, you took your more viscous fluid, the drop of dye, and you displaced the less viscous fluid, the air, with it, and this led to the stable round-shaped pattern where small perturbation at the interface were stabilizing at the end. However, in the second part of the experiment, all you did was you essentially inverted the two fluids, such that now you have your less viscous fluid, the air rushing into the more viscous one, and in this case, the pattern was unstable and small perturbation at the interface would grow into this large-scale pattern. And so this is an example of an instability between two fluids, which is called a fingering instability, and you see that it leads to these repeated branching patterns. And so I overheard a couple of you talk about the tickets that you got, and I heard people say that these tickets or these patterns that form here, they look just like trees, or they look just like ribbon network. And indeed, such branching patterns are everywhere in nature. And so in nature, nature actually explodes patterns like this in order to get an optimized function. For example, a tree grows by all these branching because it leads to an optimized uh, light exposure of the trees, of the tree leaves, and an optimized oxygen exposure for the tree. Our lungs are another example of how such a branch network can actually increase the function of a material. And this to me is very impressive. If our lungs wouldn't have been formed like that, but instead our lungs would have the shape of just a sheet, then our lungs would have to be the size of two tennis courts in order to have the same function as they do now where they fit into our body. And so, we want to understand how such patterns form, but this field is very challenging because patterns, they form in systems where very small perturbations to the system can lead to large-scale growth. And where this growth can occur because of the competition between different forces. Now, these patterns, they evolve in non-equilibrium systems and the growth is non-linear. Where non-equilibrium and non-linear are essentially terms that tell you two things. They tell you that these are systems that are mathematically extremely difficult to describe, and they tell you that these are systems that we understand very, very poorly. And so as a scientist, we want to understand how these patterns spontaneously grow, and our approach in my lab is to use model systems in order to study growth and to understand the control parameters that lead to these patterns. And I can already tell you that in this study we see many surprises which is a hint that there is very, very deep science involved in the formation of these patterns. And so we use a system to study these patterns, very similar to your ticket. We have two glass plates. One of them has a hole. We inject our fluid through the center hole. There's a very, very thin gap in which we inject the fluids. And then we look from the top how an outer fluid displaces an inner fluid. And what we typically see are these instabilities. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you uh, the invasion of a 
dyed water into an oil, and again you see these branching patterns to grow. And so you see that as soon as the water invades into this more viscous oil, the interface is unstable, these fingers grow, leading to these branches. And so if you look at a pattern like this, you might realize that these fingers, they all have approximately the same width. And indeed, these fingers are characterized by a characteristic width, which we can describe by the surface tension between the fluids, the viscosity difference between the two fluids, and by the interfacial velocity, so how fast we, do, we create these patterns. And so this critical width of these fingers sets the width and also sets when these fingers will branch, where each time they reach twice of this critical width, these fingers will split and create a new generation and these branching patterns. And so all of this has been known for quite a while, but I'd like to show you something that actually made us realize that this isn't the full story. And in order to show you that, I'd like to show you two movies where we change the width of these fingers by essentially changing one parameter, which is the velocity at which we do these experiments. And if you, in the, after the concert or so, compare your own ticket with the ticket of your neighbor, and you see that yours has thinner fingers than that of your neighbor, this would be a sign that you actually did your experiment quicker than the person sitting next to you. And so this is what we're going to do here. So in the first video, we choose a rather slow velocity, and we see these typical branching patterns again. Now in the second video, we choose a velocity that is about 10 times larger than the first one. So I just told you a larger velocity will make thinner fingers. So we will get thinner fingers, they will split much more often, and I will get a much more branched pattern. And so let me show you how that looks. <laughs> And so, really, this isn't what should have happened. This isn't what I told you would happen. This isn't what we thought would happen. Because this really is against any expectations. And if you are a little bit confused, imagine how confused we were when we saw that. <laughs> and so, we wanted to understand this. And we do this by making our system even simpler. We choose fluids which all have the exact same finger width. But even doing that, we get a whole slew of patterns. And so what is it actually that we change here? And what we change here is we use different viscosity ratios between the two fluids. And we have realized that the viscosity ratio is really a very, very important control parameter for the global growth of these patterns, where we change from very long fingers to shorter and shorter fingers as the viscosity ratio increases. So in these experiments, we have discovered a new control parameter that sets the relative length of the fingers and eventually the displacement of the fluids. And so we learned something about these branching patterns. But really, nature has many more tricks. In particular, nature can create systems that are very, very ordered, or we call them dendritic patterns. Patterns like a snowflake which has a very specific six-fold symmetry. Patterns like solidified aloes or copper oxide, which spontaneously take on a shape that is extremely regular. So can we, in our simple fluid experiments, also get an insight into these ordered dendritic patterns? And the answer is yes, because we, can, we realize that in order to get this dendritic growth, we just need some amount of an isotropy or order in the system. And we can do that in our system. We can engrave a set of ordered lattices on one of our plates, and then we switch from a very random pattern to a pattern that has the same six-fold symmetry as the lattice in which it is growing, leading to these six-fold symmetric patterns. And so we've seen before how important the viscosity ratio is for these patterns. So what happens at higher viscosity ratio? We still have a six-fold symmetric pattern but now look what happened, we got 12 branches. So there's a change in symmetry occurring, again with the same control parameter, the viscosity ratio, 
which changes the pattern from a six-fold symmetry to six long branches, six short branches, 12 long branches, and eventually even higher symmetries. So with this very simple system, we can learn something about both these branching patterns leading to very random growth, or these ordered patterns, these centrifugal <coughs> patterns, and we learn that the morphology, the selection of a growth morphology, essentially depends on intrinsic symmetries of the system, depends on the growth environment, and governs a desired function of a pattern. Thank you. Thank you.